Okay, so uh, let's let's talk a little bit more about uh, Chris Avalon, uh, the video game writer who I, I made a video about this last night, and I wrote a post at Forbes about this. Uh, Avalon was accused of basically sexual misconduct, I guess you could say, sexual um, assault by two different women, Carissa Barrows and Kelly Bristol. Barrows was the main accuser. Uh, she was someone that that Avalon did know and did have some form of a relationship with. Uh, she said on Twitter that uh, that he you know got her blackout drunk, tried to pounce on her, that she had to fight him off. She told Kotaku that um, he's fucking disgusting, but he did not rape me. She said he assaulted me one hundred percent, but I stopped him. Uh, a lot of people are arguing on Twitter right now that. Nowhere did his accusers ever say he sexually assaulted her uh, or assaulted them, which is weird since everyone's been accusing him of sexual assault this whole time. I feel like we're playing a bunch of word games here. Uh, but this is a statement right here at Kotaku uh, that she does say that he assaulted her. Now they'll say, well, he, she doesn't say sexually assaulted, but the context of this uh, alleged assault is sexual, hence sexual assault. Uh, if if you don't put the words next to each other in a in a statement, that doesn't mean that they're not there. And if he was guilty of this, you you damn well right. People would say it's sexual assault, and they should. Uh, basically, though, as I mentioned in the video yesterday, uh, Avalon has reached a settlement with these women. They have released a joint statement. They have, uh, you know, I I I, I that's in the the video. From yesterday, uh, but I will read it again. Uh, the statement says, after engaging with Mr. Avalon, we prepared the following statement. Mr. Avalon never sexually abused either of us. We have no knowledge that he has ever sexually abused any women. We have no knowledge that Mr. Avalon has ever misused corporate funds. Anything we have previously said or written about Mr. Avalon, to the contrary, was not our intent. We wanted to support women in the industry. In so doing, our words have been misinterpreted to suggest specific allegations of misconduct that were neither expressed nor intended. Uh, we are passionate about the safety, security, and agency of women, minorities, LGBTQIA plus persons, and every other community that has seen persecution in the video game industry. We believe Mr. Avalon shares the desire to protect and uplift those communities. We believe that he deserves a full return to the industry and support him in these in, in those endeavors. And it's signed by both women. Um, so... The reaction to this has been interesting. Uh, a lot of people are saying things like, well, this is they're only saying this because of the, the legal pressure that this settlement has engendered, right? Uh, there, so, so here's what I want to say about that. Like, yes, they're only, they're only making this statement because they were legally obligated to. Uh, but let's, let's just look at the scenario real quick. Let's, let's just take a step back for one moment. Uh, let's pretend that you are accused of the things that Chris Avalon is accused of, of you know, pouncing on a woman, taking advantage of her when she's drunk, assaulting her, and your career and your life is ruined, right? You're accused on Twitter, there's no charges pressed. So you're not, you do not have a day in court. You do not have, uh, you know, the, you're not investigated by the police. There are no judges or lawyers. You you don't have a crime that there's a, no one is, has pressed charges on you. So there's no crime to hash out in court. You cannot prove your innocence. In the court of public opinion, everybody has made up their minds. They believe the accusers and they don't believe you. That's it. You've denied it. And now it's a he said, she said, just, just hang in there. You've lost your job. You've been blacklisted from the industry. You've been canceled based on accusations made on Twitter. Now, maybe these accusations are true. Maybe they're false. Let's say for the sake of this thought experiment, since it's about you, right, that you're, that you're innocent. You didn't do it. But of course, since it's a he said, she said thing, you have no way to prove this to everybody. Not necessarily anyways. What are your options? I just want to know what you would do. You're innocent. You, you want the world to know you're innocent. You want your life back. <clears throat> you got to go to court. There's no other way around this. Uh, the, the, the next steps of actually going to court and proving libel, proving that someone is lying and slandering you, is very, very difficult. It, that is a very, very difficult case to make. 
And this this case that that was originally uh, taken to California, uh, the 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 uh, Barrows and Bristol opposed the, the case he brought to California, but there they were denied their their opposition of that case. But he was turned down in California. The case was dismissed based on jurisdictional issues, and it moved to Illinois. That's where this settlement has now since taken place. That's in Chicago, in Illinois. Uh, so that's where this settlement has been reached, and it's a confidential settlement agreement that includes public statements from both Avalon and his accusers. The statement I just read being one of those. Now, I published all of this, and uh, in, in the blog post that Avalon wrote, there is some very vague language about a seven-figure uh, payout. I wasn't sure who was getting this payout because it is so vague. And uh, it mentions, again, in this blog post, a confidential settlement agreement and a seven-figure payout. I wanted to know more, so I reached out directly to Avalon's lawyers. Uh, they said to me, um, and it's a very short quote, the settlement agreement provides for a seven-figure payment to Mr. Avalon. Now, on Twitter, people are calling me a liar. They want the they want screenshots of the, the email, which I personally consider until I'm told otherwise is a confidential, not a confidential email, but a private email that I, I'm not willing to share uh, until I'm told that I can share it. Uh, but I urge other journalists to follow up and reach out to Avalon and his lawyers to verify that, that, what, I've, that what I'm saying is true. This is how it works. If anyone else was covering the story, they could simply reach out to Mr. Avalon and his lawyers, and 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 they could find the same thing out. Uh, I've also been I've also had people saying bizarrely that uh, that I am t- saying that the the uh, lawyers are breaching their confidentiality agreement. Well, this is absurd on its face. Uh, the confidentiality agreement clearly does not cover the information being told to me. <laughs> The fact that there is a payout being paid to Mr. Avalon is not confidential. The details of the agreement, the the actual sum, and any other stuff that we don't know about is confidential. That's the confidential part. In most of these types of agreements and settlements, even like business deals, there will be private confidential material, and then there will also be stuff that we hear about. For instance, and this is a perfectly... uh, kind of off-topic example, but for instance, the New York Times purchased Wordle last year from Josh Wordle, the creator of Wordle. The terms of the deal remain confidential, but they did reveal that they paid him a seven, a low seven-figure sum. That's still confidential. We don't know how much. We don't, was that a million dollars? Was it $10 million? What does that mean? We, Or I guess it wouldn't be 10. Is it $9 million? Uh, Sorry, my math. Not so good right now. Um, We don't know because it's confidential. Just like with this deal, we don't know what the terms are. We don't know what the the parameters of this deal are. I certainly don't know. The lawyers didn't tell me. I am pretty sure that his lawyers did not breach the terms of their confidentiality agreement by telling me this information. I'm pretty sure that they know what the terms of their confidentiality agreement are better than anybody else. And, and this information is not part of it. I'm sure if they said, oh, the number is $2,500,000, that they would be breaching that confidentiality agreement. And I'm sure that there are other things in that agreement that we are not privy to and will never be privy to because they're confidential. Uh, <clears throat> there's a lot of people on Twitter right now trying to be really clever about all this, trying to suggest that like somehow I'm either being dishonest in my reporting or that the lawyers have broken their confidentiality agreement or that I'm lying because this must mean they're breaking their confidentiality agreement. But again, I would urge any journalists interested in actually following up on this to simply contact Mr. Avalon and his attorneys. They can clear it up for you. Uh, if they want to uh, make this, let me take a screenshot of the email or, or whatever, I will do that. But again, in private correspondence with people, I simply don't go sharing it with Twitter. Uh, that's just not how I do my business. That's not how I do my job. That's not how I believe journalists should behave. Uh, I've given the relevant statement. And, and oftentimes in this job, you get a statement from a company. You don't say the name of the person you get a statement from. They say, you know, this is a spokesperson, whatever. Look, 
That's just how I think, I think you behave ethically. Uh, <clears throat> but again, if other journalists want to follow up on this, they can. It's not like a big secret. Uh, again, even in Avalon's uh, statement, he mentions the seven-figure figure payout, but he does not give specifics. And I don't know the legal stuff that went into that, but this shit is so lawyered up, it's, <laughs> it's coming out the ears, right? They are clearly, there is clearly a very specific way that this language has to be presented. And I don't know what that is because I don't have access to the confidential agreement, but that's the way it is. Um, <clears throat> now, as to guilt and innocence, again, I don't know. I mean, who knows? Maybe, maybe in this legal agreement that these that these parties came to, part of the deal was for them to perjure themselves and lie. But I think typically in these agreements, you're supposed to tell the truth, uh, and they wouldn't come to this agreement <clears throat> without there being some reason for them to actually go and make this statement. If they had won, then they wouldn't be making the statement or making a payout to, to Avalon. Uh, is, it, is it conceivable that, that he's just getting away with it? That he's used the power of the law to, to bully these people? Sure, but it's not very likely. This never really happens. In all the other Me Too stories that we've encountered, how many times has someone who's claimed to be innocent gone and actually succeeded at proving that or at getting his accusers to walk back their accusations? It's almost unheard of. Uh, so it seems very unlikely, especially because that's a very high bar. Like, even if you went to court at, in a criminal case and and you were you got off as, as innocent, your, your accusers would never have to say that you were they would just have to deal with the fact that you got off. So uh, it's it's a complicated subject, and I'm sympathetic to everybody involved. It's sort of a horrible thing. I think this whole thing, like, this isn't really a happy ending, a happy story in any way, because um, because it really just sucks for everybody. You know, uh, Avalon's reputation in life are, are you know, they're never going to be back to it the way they were. He's not coming back from this, even with, I mean, obviously the reaction online is, is people just totally denying that any of it's true, that, that he was just saying, well, I think he's still he's guilty. So it doesn't matter what, what these, these accusers walk back. Um, the women themselves, I'm sure their lives are, are pretty much ruined from this. Um, certainly it can't, can't be fun to get caught up in all this. And uh, this hasn't been good for victims who, you know, now their, their stories will be cast into doubt more than ever before. Uh, you know, and this hasn't been good for the industry. This has not been good for anybody. It's a terrible story. I hate even reporting on it. Um, it's not been good for me. People have accused me of wanting clout. I don't want clout. I don't want to touch this stuff with a 10 foot pole, but somebody has got to do it. And I just don't like injustice, I guess it bothers me. Um, there are lots of sexual predators out there. There are so many and so many have been, thank God, caught and have faced consequences for it, uh, including jail time. And, and too many get away with it. And that's terrible. Uh, and it's a really, really sad subject all around. And um, I know that there are some journalists doing a really good job at making sure that they verify any claims that are made before they go to print, to verify um, that the accusers involved are not just making stuff up. Because we have seen that. We've seen that numerous times. And it's not like anybody believes that there are more false accusers than actual victims out there. But the fault, you know, one bad apple does a lot of damage to, to the cause, to, to, the, to the legitimate uh, suffering that actual victims have faced. So this is a big deal. Um, and I just think it's, it's terrible also when someone who is innocent is accused of something that they didn't do. Uh, again, I cannot look through some magic globe and discover what actually happened with any of this. Nobody can. The only people who really know are the people involved. But I do think it's important that you that we report on on the outcome of this case, even if if you think it's it's bullshit. This is the outcome of the case. Uh, this is the statement that has been made. Uh, it, and again, I would just say that. If your only recourse in a situation like this, where you've been tried in the court of public opinion, on Twitter and social media, not in the courts, if your only recourse there is it's not good enough to say, no, I didn't, is you have to go to court, you have to take make a lawsuit, then it's just so disingenuous to say that that proves that someone's guilty. 
or that they, them actually winning that lawsuit is just them bullying with the, the power of, of the legal system. What other recourse do people have in this situation? I just don't know. And it really sucks also because so many people who are assaulted, who, who, who are, you know, abused, are unable to use the courts to their advantage. And, and I understand that. And I have a lot of empathy for that, more than you know, honestly. And, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people who are, who are assaulted don't ever even go to the authorities, don't ever even talk about it. So much of this goes unreported. So this is a real issue and one that we should be compassionate about. Uh, but you don't actually do victims any favors. You don't actually help women or children or anyone who is suffering from, from being abused or assaulted or anything else by making up false allegations. It's just, it's, this is not, uh, this is not a moral or ethical way to go about this. In any case, I have reported what I have been told by Avalon's attorneys, by what I've seen in the public statements. All of this is the information we have. The information we don't have is what else went into the confidential agreement. We do not have uh, any other statements from any of the parties involved. They have all remained, they've, they've issued these public statements and that's it. And you can debate, mince words, whatever. It seems to me, however, that this is a walk back of claims made and uh, in the most sort of like protect my ass legal way possible. And it, it and if it just feels weird and icky, it's because that is, it is. It's not very human. This whole thing has not been a very human experience, right? No, uh, no, you know, it's just, it's just the whole thing just makes me sad. I hope that other, um, I hope some, some people from, some journalists from Kotaku or Polygon or The Verge or Bloomberg, reach out to Mr. Avalon and his attorneys. Reach out to Ms. Barrows in Bristol, their attorneys. Reach out, find, f f get statements. What I've gotten from, from Avalon's attorney is what I've gotten. And, and you, can, you can doubt it all you want, but until somebody else goes and verifies it, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, that's just, that's the job of, of the press. Do your job. That's all I can say. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, hit that notification button, and hopefully we can talk about something a little more fun next time. Peace.